morning friends my name is Bernard welcome to my channel this video is going to be about the Wolfhard Etude number 47 key of A minor the fact that it's in A minor immediately uh, you know let it raise your you know your alert status uh, it's going to be something special the tempo indication is andante cantabile that's slow walk singing cantabile singing so this is going to be a, an etude that Wolfhard has created for you to be expressive. And you want to make, and how are we going to make expressive? Sure, vibrato, that's natural. Dynamics. There's, there's, throughout the piece, there's, there's some dynamics, especially in the second half. There's some hairpins. Now if, yeah, there's not, not very many now that I look at it. There's one printed four lines from the bottom, and then there's the last one. We can do a lot more. Basically, follow the lines. When the line goes up, let the crescendo happen. When the line comes down, let the diminuendo happen. Not always, not always. But let's let's start from the top. So, you notice we've got the first indication is a suggestion is a first finger. We start with the first finger and we make a shift. Well, we can make that expressive right there. A little trick. Let the first finger drag a little bit for the slide. I always like on this on the second bar of the C natural. Um, I get more more stuff from my vibrato with the third finger, so I'll just do an extension there. Quite easy. It's just a minor third out of natural third position. And slide back down. You see how expressive that becomes as opposed to my playing. See that that's not nearly as expressive. It's got to be done tastefully. We don't want ugly slides like I mean that kind of that's kind of stuff very a little of that goes a long way. You can get away with it once in a while. But a little bit more tasteful. So you notice all the way through this whole first line, shifting, shifting with some expression. So, first line, the dynamic stays pretty much the same all the way through what we would call, <laughs> professionals call that house mezzo forte. Just a comfortable dynamic. I'm using the full bow, one bar per one bow. Now we come to the second line, and I want to do something a little special here. So I'm going to split the, the first bar of the second line in two bows. It's a nice phrasing also where we come down to this on an up bow. Instead of can be done, but it's not as nice. It doesn't quite have the same emotional feeling. We can kind of sit there. Now, I've made my shift to half position, and you could play a G sharp. One one, but I prefer to have total legato there, as opposed to. There's just a little something with that first finger. At least it works well for me to stay in half position. So I play. Now, how do I get out of this? Because I'm down in half position. I got to see natural. I do an extension. But it's flexible. If your hand is a little smaller, maybe you'll take the first one one option to the end in first position. But for me, with a little longer finger, I could just do that. So I, I'm basically second finger is an extension, and once I hit the first finger E, I'm back to first position. 
Now I want more expression here for dynamics. I want to make a crescendo, so I'm going to take an extra bow. So up bow on that D. And I just let the bow just then, because I want to make a diminuendo. Obviously I made the crescendo, the diminuendo will be natural. Oh, and notice here we got a D third finger and a G sharp. So play the fourth finger D G sharp. So let me go back again. So when I, I see what I have in my music, what I did when I made the recordings many years ago. In the second line, third bar, I made the crescendo. And I kept that kept that, that dynamic up until the middle of the third line where I did the diminuendo. Let me see how that works now. And there I do the diminuendo. So I sort of, from one line to the next, the first line, crescendo, second line, diminuendo. That's very interesting where I play Let's see, I'm down, up, down. So this is a down bow. See, the first line, the, on, the, on the second line of the piece, I made an up bow for the crescendo. And on the second line of the piece, uh, on the third, excuse me, on the third line of the piece, I did a down bow. And you see how that works so beautifully. Very, very expressive. I'll play those two lines for you. This is the first one. This is the third bar of the second line. came out backwards. <laughs> My eyes jump on these lines. Let me try it one more time, see if I get it. Okay, so let me mark this. I had to I had to change a bowing. There I did. So now, <laughs> officially, the second line, third bar starts down bow, G sharp, and then four notes up. And in the third line, in the third bar, let me make sure down, up, down, S. The third line starts up on the G sharp, and now I do a down bow with a diminuendo. So just, just the opposite between those two lines. So I'm coming through here. So at this point, I'm up bow. I had to change that a little bit. And this is very easy to do because we're, we're in a piano mode here. So I do a hairpin over two bars there. I make a crescendo. I mean, you want to do it to piano. And the second, in the second iteration there, I'll keep that one soft. Now another crescendo. Now here, pianissimo I have marked. Now, so I take this one, this is really pretty cool where I, I could have, I could have done the, the bowing with the two, first two beats down, uh, third and fourth beats up. I decided to split it. See, very much more expressive like that. And then we make it we make a retard. And now, now we're like back to the beginning of the piece. I should I haven't really mentioned this, and I should at this point talk about saving bow. When I play this. I'm not using a lot of bow on the started quarter. I 
I, I use my bow on the eighth notes to make them really sound. Save. See, a lot of this at, at, at my stage of playing is natural. I don't even have to think about it. I just automatically do that. It's just... I, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't use a lot of bow on a longer note. Like especially this half note, two quarters. I know I I need extra bow for those two quarters to make them have you know have time to sound. So, saving my bow there. All right. So now. We're one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines from the end, and we've come to an a tempo. It's going to be an up bow. We're coming there up bow because we just finished. So now we've got the we've got an E coming, a high, and we're gonna you know we're gonna have two shots at this. So I figured that's the first time make it more expressive. Do an extra shift there. Get up to fifth position, then you can you can vibrato that high E. Notice how that bowing worked out so well. The crescendo on an up bow, diminuendo on a down bow. We've had now and I split the bow so I can make a crescendo. We don't often we don't often do crescendos, you know, we don't want to do a crescendo on a down bow, but sometimes it works like this. And then I can finish it with the up with the up bow G. You know, say I want more sound, so I split the bow. The minuendo, here we go again. Now this time, this is going to be a little bit different fingering. I'm going to shift to third position, and then this is a this is a little fancy fingering. I'm extending just a half step to the F natural, but that lets me sort of ooze, if you will, to fourth position. Easy to get the first finger behind the F, and then I'm comfortable to make sure that harmonic is going to sound. So I'll play again right there. We're in first position. Shift the third, extend to the F, bring the one under, there's the harmonic, the minuendo to piano. Now this time I'm going to, not make it a crescendo, add in the G. Notice I make every one of these shifts an expressive shift. I don't know which bow, which way is my bow? Down, up, down. This should be up bow. Now you see, even sometimes if we need to, we can do a diminuendo on an up bow. And there, adding a little extra interest. This is three lines from the bottom, the third, the last bar. I could have played like, but I want to add extra interest, the last chance for us to make this this you know like the beginning. So I make it a little bit special. I'll play from the the last the three last three lines. See how that gives extra interest. Like everyone say, oh well, it's almost over. But then I do this. You see, it's like that pickup. It just picks you right up back into the music.
Also, starting down bow gives me a little bit more power. Can, I could just say a little bit more. I, I didn't want to be that aggressive to start the piece. It's very opening. It's more a little more wistful and you know inviting you in and something something new. But now at the end, last two last two lines. Last chance to say this, don one bow, the diminuendo, there's the extension, same. So I extend this, then I slide in the third, and then a little extra stuff. I slide from third to fourth there on a 2-2. Two -two. Extra bow. Do another slide there. I'm in fourth, going to. F with, the, with the big finish. So we had that big crescendo. How do I get there? Start. Start up all. See, I already start the crescendo. Extra, extra bow in the last, the last place. Uh, okay, so I hope this helps you understand this etude. It's a wonderful etude, very expressive, not that difficult. You know, a couple of little fancy fingerings for the left hand, using molto vibrato, molto appassionata, but mainly bow distribution is of, of the essence in this. Every time you have the long notes, save, sustain, and then then you can with the with the eighth notes you can you can use your bow but make more sound. And then add in, of course, adding in dynamics in the first first one two three four five six seven seven lines. I added a lot of dynamics. Very natural. Hopefully, it shouldn't be a big a big deal for you to be able to go through this maybe a, a second time and marks to use dynamics in. Okay, thank you so much for listening. I hope this is really helpful for you and enjoy your day.